Welcome to this lesson, which is all about subsurface scattering and how you can use it within RenderMan. The subsurface scattering is the way that light penetrates a translucent object, it bounces around inside of it, and then it exits out of that object in a different location. And you can find this in many different materials in the real world, from plastics, marble, fruit, milk, wax, and of course, skin. Now, subsurface scattering is a pretty complex subject, and in order to keep this lesson short and to the point, I'm going to give you the fundamentals of scattering rather than going down into the deep, advanced settings. But feel free to read the RenderMan documents for further information about the parameters. So, within RenderMan, you have a number of subsurface scattering models, and I've approached this lesson slightly differently to the others due to the fact that it can take a while to, for the objects to render. And I just wanted to run through the different models and show you their nuances and the fine detail that each model provides. So I've gone ahead here and I've created this melting teapot to use as our demonstration scene. And as you can see, the Maya scene itself is pretty simple. I've got my teapot here, which I've sculpted in ZBrush, and it's sitting on top of this gallery plinth. I have one dome light here, which is contributing to most of the lighting. And I also have this light behind my teapot which acts as a rim light and it really increases the effect of the subsurface scattering. And this is always a good technique to place a, a bright light behind any object that you want to be translucent as the example that I've just mentioned about putting your hand in front of a window. So you can see here that the shader itself is pretty simple. I've got a colored diffuse. I've added a small bit of specular which I'm running in physical mode. And then down here I've input a bump map which really adds to that overall chocolate feel. And I'm driving that bump with this Pixar fractal node. So just to note that I've created this sculpted teapot at a height of 30 centimeters, as I would if I was making one in the real world. And as with most things in computer graphics, working it in a real world scale is really important. And especially when it comes to things like subsurface scattering. So let's just go ahead here and have a look at the subsurface parameters before we have a look at some actual renders. So at the top here, you've got subsurface models and you can choose which one you want. And in a minute, I'll show you the differences between these. The gain here is your subsurface weight. The color here is the color of your subsurface scattering. Now this mean free path distance, this is basically how far light will pass through your object. And again, I'm going to demonstrate this to you in a minute. And this mean free path color, this is what color is applied when you get to this path distance here. And like all the other lobes within the Pixar surface, the subsurface also comes with a whole bunch of advanced parameters as well. And we're not really gonna get into these too much today, but feel free to go ahead and read the render man documentation if you wanna know more about these advanced settings. Okay, so let's jump into Nuke and have a look at some actual renders. Now, this first picture that I wanna show you here is actually the subsurface teapot but it's only illuminated by that rim light that I was telling you about. And you can really see this effect here where the light is starting to come through these thinner parts of our teapot. Now, let me show you this other picture. So this image here is my final chocolate shader. And the only thing about it is that it doesn't have any subsurface scattering. So I just wanted to show you what the shader looked like before I turned the scattering on. And you can see here, yes, it looks chocolatey and you can see what the bump is doing to it, but it doesn't really have any translucency to it. And in a minute, you'll really see that by adding subsurface scattering, it kind of really adds that extra magic to it. So here you can see I've got a whole bunch of renders that I've done with each of the main modes that RenderMan ships with. And I've done them at various different settings of that mean free path distance. So you can see here that I've got the Jensen, I've got Dion, I've got Burley, and I've also got the more advanced and newer subsurface mode, which is path traced. So if we just have a look at this first picture here, which is Jensen, and this has a mean free path distance of 0 0.5, you can now see that where it gets thinner within the teapot, we're now starting to get that kind of subsurface scattering. And if I just jump back here to our original render which doesn't have any scattering on it and flick between the two you can see that just by adding a tiny bit of subsurface scattering immediately turns our you know very dark and interesting teapot into something here which really now begins to look like chocolate if i just jump to dion here you can have a look at that and then this is burly 
and then this here is the path traced. Now, the thing you're going to start to notice is that the difference between these top three modes as we start to get up the mean free path is not actually that great. So this is two on the Jensen, and this is two on the Dion, and this is two on the Burley. And this is really where you should start to kind of look is up the top here. So this is four on Jensen, four on Burley, and then this is eight on Jensen, eight on Dion, and then eight on Burley. And then this is 16 on Jensen, 16 on Dion, and 16 on Burley. Now I've purposely not been showing you these path trace versions because when I was rendering these out and preparing this lesson, I sort of realized that the difference between these top three modes actually isn't that huge. And a lot of it really comes down to your eye. There's no real visual difference between these on four, and then I run through them at eight. There's a slight bit of difference, but you know the difference here is pretty negligible. And actually it really comes down to which one you wanna choose. Now, if you look at the path trace, for instance, this is 0 0.5, then this is two, and then this is four, and then this is eight, and now we're into 16. We've come away from our chocolate and we've made it more of a kind of melted caramel looking teapot. So if I compare these, say I go back to eight, and I compare the eight of the path trace to eight on the burly, you can see that the difference between them is massive. So the moral of this lesson is basically what I would suggest is try the path traced first and see how you get on with that. And then if you're not getting the, quite the results that you want, I would then jump into one of these other ones. But path tracing comes with a slight caveat and a bit of a warning is that it's not necessarily slower, but it does introduce a little bit more noise. But luckily for you, Renaman shits with an amazing denoiser, so that shouldn't really be a problem in the end. So I hope this lesson has been useful to you about the amazing things that you can do with subsurface scattering. And the best thing to do is just dive in, have a play with the path traced, see how you get on. And if you need some more information, please do check the documentation on the Pixar Render Man website. And I'll see you in the next lesson.